Hey guys, Wesley Shibata here of DevTax. So today we're going to be talking about ballistics. So when I started making these Ronin helmets, I needed to learn how to make it stop bullets. And I had to research about different types of materials and so on and so forth and helmet designs. And I studied about this one and the history of helmets and ballistic helmets. Now, what was interesting is that I mean, how do you actually protect your face? And back in World War I, the reason why soldiers were wearing those helmets, those one-piece helmets, was not really to protect um, from incoming projectiles, I mean bullets, straight to your face. They were designed actually to protect them from falling debris, from the sky, from bombs, from airplanes, and what have you. And a hundred years later, I think the helmet's design hasn't really changed much. I mean, it's still a one-piece one piece helmet, like the World War I helmet. And it also doesn't really protect your face. And why is that? I mean, if you think about it, right? Innovation from a hundred years ago has gone way, way um, advanced. You have propeller airplanes to jets, and then you have um, Sherman tanks, and then became Abram tanks, and you have, you know, uh, trains from coal now to electric and so on and so forth and everything has changed except this thing right here why because when we think about the sherman tank i would compare this helmet to sherman tank because the sherman tank is a one piece slab of steel and this one is a one piece slab of aramid maybe not slab but it's aramid fabric and it covers the whole thing and it's one piece, right? Now, what I'd like to talk about this is that how does it really stop bullets? Now, the Sherman tank, when a Sherman tank gets hit with a projectile, it's either going to stop it, going to have a ba bad back face deformation or a really dented to a point where it's just no longer um, useful or it's just gonna pay, penetrate through and through. Now, and I would call that this paper cup analogy. Now I'm gonna show you what would happen if a bullet hits this one. And this is pretty much this right here, okay? So what would happen if a bullet hits this one piece protection. You see that all the energy was concentrated in one area and that would be your one piece helmet. Now, let's talk about the Abram tanks. Abram tanks are different. The design is very interesting because what they did was they created a chassis or the body itself. And then they put slab of steels in separate pieces and they slapped it on it. And right between the frame and the steel plate, you have about two inches thick of rubber sheet and these plates are all in separate pieces now to look at that here is a paper cup analogy and tissue paper so this paper cup right here resembles our ballistic design we have here a slit right next to each other and this would 
pretty much be the same design as our ballistic helmet. Now, imagine this is our ballistic frame. And we have here the soft cushioning right in between of it. Now let's put it on top of the tissue paper roll. Now imagine this is the bolt right here. If I were to put shoot the helmet in one spot and it hits the plate, you would see that there's much less back face deformation and the energy transfer is only to one part only, not really pushing the whole thing. It doesn't ripple and trying to grab more energy from other place in order for it to stop it. This alone stops the bullet and I'm pushing more energy onto this part right here compared to this it's a very very light energy and it's already breaking apart now I would compare Abram tanks to our helmet because each plate on our helmet has about 1.5 millimeters thick rubber sheet, rubber foam. And how it's designed looks pretty similar to an Abram tanks where the plates are all in separate pieces. So when a projectile hits the helmet or the, the plate, it would not, how to say, it, the kinetic energy would disperse in only one area or it would lessen the kinetic energy. That's why it has less back face deformation. And that's why we were able to put much thinner paddings into the helmet compared to these Sherman tanks that has really thick thick foams so that the, bad, uh, the back face deformation, it would lessen the back face deformation and protect the wearer even more. Now, my question is, how is it that for a hundred years, we're still using the one piece helmet protection after all these years? Is it probably because, you know, it costs less to make these? It's a lot easier. It's from a one press machine. Or maybe because they can't find the right, you know, designer. I don't think so. Is it because they don't have much resources? Or is it because they're able to lobby it for the next 10 years? Or maybe because, you know, they've spent millions and millions of dollars in manufacturing for the next 30 years where their um, shareholders enjoy you know a consistent um, stream of funds maybe I don't know I just think it doesn't really protect you much because of what it is really just my thoughts